Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today and welcome to January 2023 as we begin a new journey around the Gregorian calendar year. Now it is interesting to note that there are other New Year's celebrations coming up including on January 22nd where we will have the Chinese New Year which also coincides with the Human Design New Year and then in March we start the Astrological New Year year on the Aries equinox. So this is one example of how we are always moving through various cycles and how our energy frequency connects with each of them in a different way. So as we move into the first month of 2023, we will do an overview here on the significant astrology of this month, and we'll go into some of the energetic themes as well as the deeper shifts and changes that are still unfolding on the planet at this time. Now, January always begins with the sun in Capricorn. And as many of you know, this is Western tropical astrology, which applies to the seasons, the four seasons of our planet's transitions. And Western tropical astrology also involves the outer planets, including the asteroids in the asteroid belt, which would be Chiron, that is most commonly referenced. And Western tropical astrology also extends to Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which other astrological systems do not look at. And so this is why I find Western tropical astrology to be so applicable in our evolution as it reminds us how we are evolving beyond what we've known before. We are moving beyond what has been known and into further realms of our own solar system. And this is a beautiful example of our ongoing awakening, of our ongoing evolution into new energies, new understandings of those energies, and how they are working with us on our planet here. So every year at this time, the sun is journeying through Capricorn, bringing our consciousness to the Capricorn areas of our lives and more personally, the Capricorn areas of your chart. And so as the sun voyages through Capricorn, you might feel that you are really taking a good hard look at your life, at what's in front of you, at what you need to take care of. Capricorn relates to what we have achieved, the results we have experienced, as well as what we want to do next, where we're ready to go next, what is calling to us, and how to get there. What's the strategy? What's the path? How do we do so responsibly? The energy of Capricorn is also tapping us into our ongoing maturity, how our energy is designed to keep maturing throughout our life and how we honor our commitments and be very responsible with our own energy. So for all the ways we have responsibilities in the world at large, Capricorn also wants you to come back to your own energy, come back to how you're taking responsibility for it. What do you need? What fortifies you? What strengthens you. And conversely, what do you need to cut out? What no longer works? What no longer resonates? making these decisions. Now, I did want to start as well with the broader perspective of the energies that we're moving through this decade, because we need to go back to the significance of that Saturn-Pluto conjunction in January 2020. This is still an important energy signature that we're working through. And that's because, first of all, Pluto is still in Capricorn, but the Saturn-Pluto conjunction occurs every 33 to 38 years. And that cycle varies because of how Pluto moves through each astrological sign for a different length of time. For example, Pluto will spend 20 years in Aquarius, whereas it spent about 16 years in Capricorn. So when Saturn and Pluto are conjunct, they are beginning a new synodic cycle, similar to a new moon energy. But as part of the new moon energy, there are also endings that need to occur. So Saturn-Pluto making that conjunction at 22, 23 degrees of Capricorn in your chart 
initiated a new cycle of energies that we are reprogramming still, that we are still working with and working through. And this energy is even stronger as the sun is in Capricorn. So this will be the case essentially for many years to come as we are reprogramming the Capricorn areas of our life, especially after January 2020. And if you recall, we not only have had that conjunction, but we also had eclipses happening in January 2020, and there are a lot of energies opening up, bursting through on the planet. So at that time, the energies were so powerful that a shift was imminent. The energies were meant to change, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's a slower ongoing process. And again, that's why I'm bringing it up because you can look back and say, okay, well, that was three years ago. Yes, it was, but we're still working through this energy and we will continue to do so. So when we think about a Saturn-Pluto conjunction that happens, again, only every 33 to 38 years, it really brings in more energies that we're meant to become conscious of about Saturn and about Pluto. So Saturn is really about how we are here to show up in this lifetime and to develop our ongoing mastery, to remain in our authority, to be very strong in our abilities, in our capabilities, what we can accomplish, what we can produce, and how we are doing so in a way that matters, especially for the good of all. And this is one of the higher expressions of Capricorn, is that there are things we need to take care of and we want to demonstrate or we want to be good at, but it really works best when you do so from a place of benefiting others. It's not from a selfish, egoic energy. It's from a sense of, I'm going to offer this. I'm going to put this out there. I am then going to receive in return energy for what I am putting out there, but I understand that I'm doing it in a way that honors our oneness, that honors our connections, that honors how everything is connected to everything. And it's not simply about my own immediate reward. And so with this energy, we are reprogramming and getting deeper into your soul purpose, what you feel is really true for you in this lifetime, where you are stepping into more of your mastery. And then the Pluto energy, Pluto and Capricorn, we're still working through that into 2024. But important to note that because Pluto is ending his journey through Capricorn, there could be a sense here of not only looking at how much the Capricorn areas of your life have changed since 2009, that's when Pluto first entered Capricorn, but how every annual cycle of the sun in Capricorn has been returning you back to yourself, back to your energy, and what is important for you to honor in yourself. So Pluto in Capricorn is connecting us to our evolutionary growth, how we're meant to show up in the world and be in our power, perhaps in ways that we haven't experienced in previous lifetimes. Perhaps what we're understanding is more of the deeper soul contracts and energies that were operating in our psyche that were unconscious, and now they are becoming conscious. And that is always one of the gifts of Pluto, is that we dive deep into those parts of ourselves that were previously closed down, unconscious and unknown, and we look at what was residing there. What was the fear? And Pluto in Capricorn could be revealing to you fears around being in your power, fears of understanding your own gifts and how you can offer them out into the world, maybe even some fears about doing something on your own terms without support, needing to really be in your power without 
relying on others' approvals. So these are just some of the general themes. But this energy, again, it's very strong every January because the sun comes through Capricorn and lights up this part of your chart, this part of your energy field. So we are being gifted here with opportunities to check in in on our own reprogramming, the parts of ourselves that we've had to deconstruct, dismantle, take apart that aren't a fit for where we're going next. And so this could be a month where you feel that you're really checking in on how far you've come in only three years. It could also be a time when you're checking in on what you've discovered about your own abilities, your own areas of expertise. This could be where you're understanding what works for you in a profession or a career or what doesn't work for you. Capricorn is about your public status, your title, how others view you, how they see you. But keep in mind, Capricorn can be at a distance, meaning it's what people perceive even though they don't know you personally. And so we are reframing and restructuring our sense of self and what we're able to do in the world, perhaps tapping into more of our energy that we really haven't noticed or recognized at all in this lifetime. And this particular January, we have Mercury retrograde in Capricorn, where Mercury is going back and forth across that 22-23 degree point where Saturn and Pluto previously met up. So we are still rethinking and working through some ideas, some concepts, some possibilities. How is this going to come together? How can I make this happen? How can I make this real? And that is something that is very clear with Capricorn, is that you can have all the ideas in the world, all the inspirations in the world, but how are you going to make it real? How are you going to make a living with it? How are you going to make it official, make it a business uh, that's as simple as doing something where maybe you want to set up your own LLC or you want to do something outside of a traditional path. And those energies have been stirred up in us, which is interesting because of how Capricorn is very traditional. Capricorn is about you do this to get there, or you stay at a company for 10 years and then you get the promotion and then you get the next office suite. And Capricorn often sees things through that hierarchy, what you have to earn, what you have to put in time and energy to achieve. But we've been dismantling that. That has been coming apart and being taken down. And it's opening up so much. It's opening up the playground, so to speak. It's opening us up to multiple paths, multiple ways of achieving or doing something that could also feel very uncertain. Almost like we don't want to do it wrong, but is this the way? And part of this Capricorn focus has been on returning us to our own individual energy frequencies and how we take responsibility for ourselves, which will look different than the person to your left and the person to your right. And that's because these energies are overlapping with the incoming age of Aquarius energies that want us to step more into our individuation. Age of Aquarius is where we go into our knowingness and we feel confident in our differentiation process, meaning now it's like, I'm okay to do this my own way, to do this on my own terms. I don't have to follow a traditional path. I don't need to do what I was taught or told when I was younger. In fact, this is also redefining and reprogramming what success means to you. And that could be something that you come in contact with every January is that you're looking at, well, what does it mean to me to be successful? Maybe not just in your profession or career, but every area of your life. What does that mean? What is that for you, which is what truly matters? 
So during this January 2023, we are still working through what we are changing and shifting in our lives. And we're perhaps getting new ideas, new inspirations, new downloads that can only happen so fast, that can only come through so quickly at times. But the Mercury retrograde of this month is giving us that time and space to sit with something, think it through, apply critical thinking, don't be hasty, don't rush, really look at what is solid here that you can rely on. And all of that comes back to to relying on yourself. How much are you really stepping into your own sovereignty, your own authenticity, your own power? And how is that an energy that you are strengthening? Because Capricorn gives us the strength to do what we need to do to take care of what we need to take care of. And that is also something that could be showing up for you this month is that you're seeing, all right, I've got to tackle this issue. I've got to take care of this problem. Or also the sense of there's things in my life that I don't want to continue to live out. There's patterns or habits or things within me that I don't want to keep living. And so there's something here where the Capricorn energy requires us to take responsibility for our choices, our actions, our behaviors, but to do it from a place of maturity and also an energy of commitment. And I feel this as the energy is strengthening to the soul's frequency of commitment, meaning you could go back to the energy field you were in before you took a body, before you came into existence, before you showed up in your fabulous shiny human suit, and you could dive into what soul commitments did I make to myself that were important in this lifetime? And this is often where we have to face consequences. That's part of Capricorn. Uh, We have to look at, well, this is what I chose before. This is what I did before. This is what I said before. And I'm going to do it differently because of what I've learned. Now, Capricorn comes after Sagittarius. Sagittarius was the energy or is the energy of how we accumulate experiences, knowledge, and wisdom, what we've learned along the way through our life experiences. And then Capricorn is how you apply it, how you apply that knowledge, how you realistically use it that shows you where you're growing, that shows you how you're changing. So this can be a time where you're understanding I'm done with some things. I'm through with certain chapters of my life. And you could even sense perhaps that this initial desire to make a drastic change, perhaps it was initially seeded back in January 2020 with that Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Again, things take time to play out. There's times when it's like, how fast can you turn a cargo ship around? You know, like how fast can you really make some big life changes? And there are times when it seems things happen quickly, right? When it's like all of a sudden something changes for you. You have a really big week with lots of life shifts coming and by the following Monday you have a new job or you're needing to move, right? There's things that happen at a faster speed. But Capricorn is slower and it wants us to remain in our power and in our authority as we make these changes. And Capricorn also will wait it out and say it's not the right time. It's not the right time yet. And Capricorn is a timekeeper. It's about the time we have on the planet. So there could be ideas you're having this month about what you're ready to change. Maybe you feel like, yes, this is the year. This is the time for these changes I've been thinking about or that have been percolating in my mind for the past few years. Now, Mars is still retrograde in Gemini for half of the month. And I have done two separate podcasts for you, one on the Mercury retrograde energies and one on the Mars retrograde energies. So I'm not going to overly repeat myself, but just call in the big themes here. 
that Mars in Gemini is moving very slowly in January. It starts the month at 10 degrees, only to station direct at 8 degrees, and it will do so on January 12th. Then Mars in Gemini ends the month also at 10 degrees. So Mars is only moving between 8, 9, and 10 degrees of Gemini in January, which means you could feel a lot going on in your mind, circling around in things. Perhaps you need to make a list, write it out. What are the ideas? What are the thoughts? Even if it doesn't feel like there's a lot of life force to them yet, there's something here where we're meant to tap into what we're really choosing. And this is a double whammy, if you will, because of Mercury retrograde at the same time. And Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. I feel like January is an important month to review and look at what you want to change and do differently that could be very significant in your life. Meaning it could be a big new decision. It could be a risk. It could be something you're feeling within you that has drastically shifted and changed. And now you're being pushed to do something differently, to show up differently. I also am feeling the energy of the throat chakra strengthening, where this could be you're tapping into a truth that you need to speak, but it feels almost monumental. It feels like perhaps it's something you haven't done before. You haven't spoken up in this way, or you haven't expressed your needs in this way before. I mean, this is a very deep energy here that we're working with, and we're taking it into our daily lives. We're meant to express it. And that can be stronger towards the end of January. So as we look at this month, we're going to have Mars station direct January 12th at 8 degrees of Gemini. We're going to have Mercury station direct at 8 degrees of Capricorn on January 18th. And then we're going to have Uranus station direct at 14 degrees, 56 minutes of Taurus on January 22nd. I feel like January 22nd is a powerful day because once Uranus stations direct, all planets are direct until April. This has been the theme for over 10 years now, by the way, where there has been the planets all direct the first half of the year. So we're in that cycle, and I'm generalizing, but we're in a cycle that the planets are all direct, and that means you could feel like what you have been sitting with, thinking through, what you've been analyzing or considering, it's going to have more support, especially starting January 22nd. And if you recall, that's also the Chinese New Year and the Human Design New Year. And then we also are going to see the sun enter Aquarius January 20th. So the first three weeks of January could feel quite internal, that you're understanding what's happening within you. Maybe you're coming into contact with some new parts of your energy that you want to activate. You want to live from new places within yourself. You're aware of what you have shifted, changed, evolved, you're ready to do things differently. And that feels like a big energy of this year, ready to do it differently, ready to try something in a new way, ready to apply your energy or show up in a way that actually supports your own mastery, even if it feels a little scary, a little challenging, a bit of a risk, but it's right on time. So again, this energy of January, it still relates to January 2020, what drastically shifted on the planet, but more personally, what shifted within you because you were ready to step in to more parts of your energy and to basically create some new experiences for yourself that would play out throughout this decade. Now, Venus enters Aquarius 
on January 2nd. And she has an interesting journey throughout January as she is in the fixed sign of Aquarius. And she will make interactions this month with Uranus in Taurus, the North Node in Taurus, the South Node in Scorpio, and Saturn in Aquarius. This Venus is being activated to really open up to more of who she is that makes her different. And I feel like there's something here that could be both surprising and also solidifying. It's sort of like this energy of you you can't put on the mask anymore or, or you can't pretend or you don't even want to. You could feel that there's a part of you that just wants to be real. You just want to be yourself. You just want to show up and not have to play a role, play a part because this Venus in Aquarius is deeply connected to your individual soul gifts, to what you're really here to love and accept about yourself, to what you're here to embrace and how you're here to understand that that's exactly what's needed in the wholeness of the universe, that you hold a special frequency and that there are things in your life. It's interesting because I'm feeling this uh, as the energy in the heart chakra And I'm feeling it as things just being removed, like you're just kind of done. It doesn't even matter. You don't even feel it. You're not in that place anymore of where you were or what you thought you wanted. Venus is about what we desire, what we want, what matters to us because it's rooted in our values. And as she moves through Aquarius, she has new understandings of what that really means to her and where she's going in her life path, where she's going in her future trajectory. When she has a square to Uranus and Taurus and then a square to both the South Node and the North Node, there's something that's going to be a checking in point here of what is true for you. And I also feel like there's something that we've been working through, especially considering the eclipses we've been moving through in Taurus and Scorpio. And Venus has been the ruler of those eclipses in Taurus. It just feels like this is a powerful heart reprogramming, but it's also reprogramming love for self, compassion for yourself, maybe even an understanding of more of the lessons and healings you've had to go through, especially in Venus areas of your life. This could also be that you are forming a new relationship with your self-love, your self-worth. Venus is about how we relate to everything in our world. So we often think of relationships between people. But we relate to everything. I mean, you relate every morning probably to your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, or, you know, we're in these really powerful relationships right now with our phones. That's a relationship. So if you look at how we are in relationship with all energies around us, this Venus is helping you understand what those priorities are and what is uniquely true for you that might even surprise you. So there's something about Venus having some surprises this month where, again, you could surprise yourself or there could be something that surprises you, something that comes through or shows up or a message or just something that happens and you're thinking, wow, this is happening because of the energy I've reprogrammed within myself. And I feel like January is a month where we're really looking at how far we've come in such a short amount of time. And by time, I mean the calendar years. I mean that we have been through some very intense energies in the past three years. And this could be even a time when you just stop, catch your breath, gather your energy and ground in, ground in to what is really true for you right now and to remain open, remain open to where you're going next. 
January and February are significant for how these are the final two months of Saturn journeying through Aquarius. And this is energies we have been working with and moving through since December 2020. And so Saturn will move through the final degrees of Aquarius over the next two months. And this is where you could feel like you have more clarity on what you're good at, where your expertise lies, what you've had to take care of. It does take Saturn nearly three decades to move around your full astrology chart between 28 to 30 years. So when Saturn is complete with an astrological sign, it doesn't come back here for about 28 years. So there's some things we're meant to finish up, to tidy up, to get clear on, and to take care of so that it's not lingering. So keep that in mind that Saturn in Aquarius, wherever it's journeying in your chart, is bringing your attention to those Aquarian matters that you are responsible for and that also want you to look at what stays and what goes. That's part of Saturn is being discerning, the yes and the no. You only have so much room in your house. You only have so much time in the day. You only have so much you can do in a week or in a month, what are your choices? And that is something that Saturn will focus on, is what are you choosing here? And is it really what you want? Is it really true for you? Or do you need to say no? Do you need to make another choice? Do you need to let it go, clear it out, etc.? So there can be a feeling of pressure in the Saturn energies and especially in the Aquarius energies of your chart. The month of January could feel like There's things you have to take care of that are dense. And I'm saying dense because we have strong earth sign energies with planets in Taurus and Capricorn. And these energies are the earth signs that shift our consciousness to the physical world where we tune in and tap in to what's happening in our physical environment in our bodies, in our finances, in our homes, in our worlds, into everything we can see, touch, taste, look at, listen to. So there is a sense here that we're meant to check in with what's happening in our physical worlds and to look at if it's in alignment with your own energy and with your own forward moving trajectory. And what I'm thinking here, like the visual I'm getting is that we've been doing so much energy work and spiritual work, and it takes time for that energy to come through and show up in our physical environments. In fact, it's often the last place that we see things shift and change. You can be doing a lot of energy work in the astral realms or in other energy fields. You could be doing a lot of internal work, right? Especially if it's emotional work or you're doing something with your fear body or you're tapping into more of your intuitive gifts, whatever it might be. But then it takes time for that energy to show up in the physical world through new choices, new decisions, new words. And yet when it does, it's like the energy finally lands. It's finally arrived. It's really here. And you could be feeling that in January, that the work you've been doing in the energetic realms is finally coming through with all of these earth signs. It also could feel like you're tapping in to what is still dense, heavy, and difficult. And that could show you now where the new work lies, where it's like, okay, I'm feeling dense around this, or I'm feeling fearful around that. That is now my new assignment from the universe. I can now work through that. I can now look at that. There could be things coming up here, let's say around your physical body. If there's things you want to shift in your physical body, you want to make new healthy choices. Uh, That's always the theme, right? In January when the gyms are packed and people are ready to go and they want to change their body. But we're all designed to do that differently. Not everyone gets in shape or gets healthy in the same way. In fact, your astrology chart can show you exactly how you're meant to be healthier, how you're meant to practice physical exercise or tap into different lifestyle options that are better for you. Because that's related directly to how your energy works, how you run energy. 
And so the fixed signs, which are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, are the energies of consistency. The fixed signs are really good at staying the course, staying with something, being on repeat. I do this every day. This is my workout routine. This is what I eat. That's how the fixed signs run. But the cardinal signs and the mutable signs do not. And I have a theory that that's why so many people actually don't stay with their New Year's resolutions and actually don't even set themselves up for success because you have to start with your energy. You have to start with who you are and how your energy operates and work with that. That's how you'll be successful. So the fixed signs are awesome at doing the weight training every day and showing up to the gym and doing things that become a routine and a habit. But the mutable signs need variety. The mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces. If the mutable signs aren't interested, aren't really feeling like they have variety and choices, then they become restless and they don't show up. They're like, I'm not doing this anymore. It gets boring. So the mutable signs need variety. The cardinal signs need a new goal, need short-term goals, or need something that gets them going that has ongoing inspiration or essentially also doesn't become too monotonous. The cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, and these are the initiators of the zodiac. So if this energy is strong in your chart, then you need something that maybe you focus on for one month, and then the next month you change it up and you do it differently. So you have to work with your energy if you want to be successful, and that's what you should base any resolutions on, any intentions on, anything about what you want to accomplish or do this year any habits you want to change, do it from your own energy source. Because again, that's how you will be successful and it's going to look different than everybody else. It's also going to remove the shoulds. It also removes the disappointment or the expectations or being hard on yourself. Like, why can't I start this workout routine, but by the fourth week in January, I'm already bored? Well, it's probably in your astrology chart that you're meant to approach it differently. So with astrology, we tap into what is true for us, especially as you get to know your own individual energy even more, and you start to see how you run energy, how you process energy, and how it works for you. And then from there, you accept yourself. You understand, this is how I need to live my life. This is how I need to commit to a workout routine or do things differently and to not expect myself to be something I'm not. So keep in mind that because January is often when we begin new intentions and maybe you have a sense of possibilities and what you want to do this year, what is actually most important is returning to the root of your energy, who you really are, how you really do things. And really all you have to do is look back on previous years. Look back on how energies seem to play out for you throughout the calendar year or look at what you want to begin in January and then how does that go as you move into, let's say, the second quarter of the year. The more you are in the knowingness of how your energy works and operates, that's how you're setting yourself up for success, for reaching your goals, for understanding what you want. In fact, I remember I had a client years ago who had really strong mutable signs and she was overweight and feeling really down on herself because she couldn't stick to one routine. And again, she had strong Sagittarius, strong Gemini, strong Virgo in her chart. And my recommendation was, well, you need variety. You need something that works with your desire to try things in a new way, in a different way, and to not be locked in to anyone else's expectations of you because that's not gonna work. So it's looking at basically choose three different exercises that you want to do and then switch it up and see how that feels, see how that works for you. And this is what will change your life. What will change your life is tapping into how your energy operates and runs. And again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but I see it all the time. 
And I see it too, people with fixed signs. I have a great friend who has very strong Aquarius energy and she's like, but why can't people just stick with it? Why can't they just do this? All they have to do is da 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 da. And so she has this whole routine and she's a health expert. And so I was saying to her, but you have strong fixed energy. And so you love that. You love the consistency. You love what you can rely on. Most of the population isn't like that. And that's why a lot of these programs kind of seem like an uphill battle or why they don't really pan out for people is because you're expecting them to be like you and they're not. So just approach it from the energetic lens of who you really are. And that's how you will achieve what you want to achieve and perhaps even stick with something that maybe you haven't stuck with before, but it's because you're approaching it from an understanding of how your energy actually operates. Now, also in January, we have the Cancer Full Moon that happens at 16 degrees of Cancer, and it is exactly conjunct the planet Sirius. And Sirius is our galactic source of energy. It's our galactic sun. So there could be some huge downloads here. Again, that's January 6th, where the energy streaming in open up the cancer parts of your chart and bring in new light codes, bring in new downloads, new wisdom, new intelligence. It's like there's this heart emotional intelligence that can open up where you're really tuning into what you need, what matters to you. Again, that's the cancer full moon at 16 degrees on January 6th. And I do have a video for you on YouTube that discusses that energy even more. Then we're going to see the Aquarius new moon on January 21st. That happens at two degrees of Aquarius and it coincides with that Chinese new year as well as the human design new year. So I feel like January 20th, 21st, 22nd is when we have a big new start coming in. This is when the energies feel like they are activated and amplified. That's when we have very strong Aquarius energies that show us even more of where we're going. Aquarius is also bringing in connections to our own timelines and to what we want to move towards on our life path. Aquarius is often connected to our visions, our hopes, our dreams, where we're going, our concepts, as well as the mental constructs of what we want to experience in our lives. So as Aquarius season begins, it will highlight even more of this. And of course, we will keep discussing these energies in every Wednesday podcast. And so we'll be discussing more of the specific transiting aspects of January in my Wednesday shows. But I just wanted to give you an overview here of some things that could be coming up and playing out for you this month, especially with the Capricorn energies that are continuing to help us restructure our lives so that you can be the architect of your own creations. You are the architect of your energy. And so what are you building now? What are you choosing? What is supporting you that is actually divinely guided and also feels like you could not have done it earlier, meaning you could not have done it last decade? Nope. There wasn't the energy for it. So there's things that are unfolding this decade and in fact this year that are right on time. And if you can continue to trust that, to invest in that, that could show you how you are beautifully on time. Even though you've been through so much, so many changes, so many things that maybe have pushed you to your own edge or required you to face some really big fears, that is still shifting and moving through us and you could feel a lightening of your own energy because of the deep evolutionary growth that we have been moving through. So essentially the first three weeks of January, we are gathering our energies, we are understanding what is important to us now, what the priorities are, really even perhaps reaching some clear decisions around where we want to invest our energy going forward. 
Then as we move through January 20th, 21st, and 22nd, there could feel like you're able to move forward. Perhaps there's a new lease on life. There's a sense of I'm going for it. This is what I want. This is what is calling to me. And the energy actually feels like it begins to accelerate as we close out January. So may this month bring you exactly what you're ready to receive. May it strengthen you. May it also give you clarity on what matters to you now. Also, I hope you feel a beautiful self-love for what you have transformed, for how deeply life has changed in only three years, but how that is beautifully guided as well, how you came in with the ability to handle these changes, that you would have access to the tools you needed, the wisdom you needed, the next steps, all in divine timing. So please know that that is how we are being supported by the benevolent universe at this time. And we will continue to be supported as we move through the big energies of 2023. If you haven't done so, be sure to check out my 2023 Soul Growth Astrology Program where you get a heads up on the big astrology of this year. It is significant and powerful. We're entering new territory and we are moving into some new chapters that will affect humanity in a very big way. So we will continue talking about that as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday for another podcast episode. You can find out more about my latest astrology programs and offerings over at mollymccord.online. And don't forget to check out the upcoming Awakening Astrology Retreat in Sedona, Arizona. We are doing that March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It's going to be evolutionary and powerful. And in fact, we've timed it to happen right before Saturn moves into Pisces and Pluto moves into Aquarius so that we're basically creating more light on the planet and really allowing you to tap into what you're here to do and offer at this time in your journey. So all that information is over on my website. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to connecting with you in our next podcast episode. And here we go. 2023 is underway.